<laughs> Bradley, what is Mother yes. of Learning? Mother of Learning is good Harry Potter. Um, Man, we've been going hard on Harry Potter. We, look, we've been talking <laughs> shit. I shouldn't say that because um, I think this story's strengths lie in a much different area than Harry Potter. Um, but man, I really enjoyed this. Now, Mother of Learning is the web serial for people who don't know it, which is most people. And um, Bradley has brought it up on the podcast before, and he gave it... I should go back and listen to that, because you, you talked know, about the I plot. Um, but and, and while I captured some of it, a lot of it is going to make a lot more sense now, so that I need to track down what podcast that was in. I need to listen uh, to what I said, too, because the first time I read... Um, so we read arc one of this story, which has been released on Audible. Um, and arc one is like the first fourth of the story, I guess. So, which, which is not bad. It is a 25 hour audiobook, but like, at least it's not all at once. Like I can kind of give myself a break and, maybe. and like, it's still going to be less than reading a couple parts of worm or, um, reading like multiple stormlight books. So like, it's yeah, not so. the worst thing. But, uh, yeah, I the first time I would have read this was over four years ago, maybe even five at this point. And um, at that point, I think the reason I stopped is... No, I know the reason I stopped is because uh, the story wasn't done yet. I got like I got to, like, chapter 50 or something. Right, and, so you uh, were just saying that's part two? Well, it'll yeah. be roughly the end of part two is what you read. Yeah, I didn't even get to the end of arc two. I don't even know if it was out yet. But, um... I, what the way I've been describing it to Willer is that compared to the first time I read this, I have way more gripes, and yet I loved it a lot more. I think the things it does well are were more apparent the second time around, and the things it does bad are more apparent the second time around. Yeah, so um, what, what were some of those things? Because for me, so this was my first time going through it. We both did the audiobook, which to open, I guess, what did you think of the audiobook's quality? Because... It's not the best audiobook reader I've heard. It's not the worst audiobook reader I've heard. There's strengths and, and weaknesses here. Man, I had a whiplash <laughs> the first, like, ten seconds of the audiobook because... <laughs> his, his His voice for the narration is fantastic. I love the voice for the narration, and I heard it, and I was like, I this is great. How His voice for the dialogue is not good. It depends. I think his I think... male dialogue is better. Yeah. Um, some female characters are all right. Some of them, like Kirio and Akuye. Akuya? Yeah. Akuye? Akuya, is, is 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 yeah. awful. <laughs> it's. I'm sorry. Maybe get a female. Like it's. This seems to be doing well. So maybe get a a co reader with him, or maybe can change the voices up a little bit. In a, you know, specifically with the voice, one thing that's interesting is many years ago whenever um i was reading this uh i was interested are, you know are there any audiobooks of this and so i looked it up and uh i think there was a girl who had like just as like a practice for audiobooking did the first two chapters or so uh and i quite liked her voice it was much lower quality like the audio and everything mm -hmm. but it was really interesting to see different people's takes on the same dialogue because mm. for example in the very first chapter there's a moment where Zorian is, um, he's talking to his mom, and, uh, Kiriel says something, and Zorian calls her an annoying brat. Actually, God, I want to find it, because I want to read the dialogue and then be like, hey, how would you read this? Because the, the, okay, yeah, here it is. She comes in, and she says, what are you talking about? And Zorian says, we were discussing what a rot rotten brat, brat you are. And so... Mm. For example, when I was reading it for the first time and the other audiobook reader, they did like a very like calm, like, oh, we were just discussing what a rotten brat you are. But this audiobook reader almost yelled it. He's like, we were discussing what a rotten brat you are. And uh, <laughs> it's really interesting to see how two different readers will interpret. I, uh, and maybe because I'm conditioned to how this reader goes, but I think the story supports this. Zorian's kind of a twat. Um, he is. Oh, yeah. So, like, I feel like that's fitting. Um, it is, yeah. He's very he's a, insensitive, he's... which I'm going to get into as, like, a very weird narrative choice considering, like, his special boy gift that he gets partway through this part. That is actually precisely what I like about the story, and I think that is its strength. Because even the official summary of the story itself 
starts with saying Zorian is an irritable young man. Yes, he sure is. He's, and he he is very irritable and very um, unaware that he's a harem protagonist who has multiple girls fawning over him. Yeah, he um, you know, he'll go through and I will say this: Zorian ultimately is a good person. Who... The, the 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 line that really sold me on Zorian being a good person at the very least is when he's like, "Yeah, okay, I could go on a murder spree next loop." But, like, there's just some things you don't do. You, ju- you just don't put your mind through this. You just, like, you, you should stay yourself and, and follow some sort of code and just not devolve into, into chaos in these loops. And, yeah, he keeps his loops very structured. He's never done something disgusting because he knows people won't remember it. He's done things that are mean, but nothing atrocious. And I think, like, being in that loop for two years, I think it goes a long way to say that you haven't done even one really bad thing out of frustration at the very least and you know um here's the thing the and i might i might even since we're on the subject i might use this to talk about the thing i really love about the story and what is the main draw for me because the hook of this story is obviously the time loop yes like that's that's the main plot that's if if someone's telling you about the story that is what they're going to tell you um man what i really enjoy what i remembered enjoying about this and i enjoyed it more the second time around is at least in this first part, and it even continues a little bit onward into the second one, I think, but this, there's an arc of Zorian coming out of a shell might not be the right word, but learning compassion for others, and that's something the time loop facilitates. Yeah. Because early on, he's kind of an asshole. Like, Bidisek is genuinely glad to see him, and he's like, ah, oh, this fucking guy is going to chat my ear off. Uh, he doesn't want to talk to anyone on the trains, he's reluctant to help the little girl with the bike, uh, but it, it, he does help her, which shows, like, there is something there. He's That's, really mean to Kiriol. Yeah. Like, the fact that he never considered Kiriol's, like, place in the family is, is just super interesting. It takes him half the half the arc to think, oh, my God, my little sister also has to deal with my bitch mom. And I'm sure yeah. he's going to learn why bitch mom is a bitch eventually and, like, and, and maybe come to terms with, like, why she's so family-oriented. And, like, there's a lot of room to grow. And, like, yeah, the time loop facilitates so much of this slow character development and like Dumarag, i believe is the author's first or last name and the easiest yeah. one to say uh Dumarag is taking his time to really like utilize the loop to show a very slow progression but like it's it's feels meaningful yeah man i uh that thing with the girl with the bike you know because initially that feels it feel you know whenever you're reading it for the first time it feels unnecessary and like a throwaway but I, I really do think it was necessary in that first chapter to establish that he's not just a wanton dick, you know? Yeah. Because, for, like, he sees that girl crying, and he's like, I'm not just going to leave a girl crying here. There, there. Um, yeah, he's got limits to his uh, indifference. And uh, this progression I want to talk about, there's, there's, like, particular moments where he makes breakthroughs. In the beginning of chapter 24 is what ties a neat bow on all this and i really wish the beginning of chapter 24 was the beginning of the final chapter of the arc Mm. um because i feel like it's where the author is like if you haven't got what i'm doing with zorian yet this is what i'm doing um so some of the moments that really hit me for example is zorian really hates his brother and he's like oh you know i got this girl has a rash you really got to help her he's like i'm not gonna fucking help you with that yeah but then he finds out the girl was emery and he has this line where he's like of course i would help if i knew it was you and uh, it, it reaches a point where i'm like zorian she used to be a background character to you even like even on the train in the, like I think his yeah that's a good point yeah she and was I forgot that she was even on the train that early over the course of the story Zorian will grow to learn hey maybe everyone is someone I could care about if I took the time to get to know them and I don't know if we you know fully flesh that out here there's some but... elements I feel like like when Zack starts becoming his friend, it gets, it's like really interesting. Um, I think Kiriel is like a very important character to like really start fleshing out 
um zorian when when he like finally decides to take her to the school and then he moves into the apartment with um the alchemist not alchemist the botanist alchemist the or yeah Ka- Ka- kyle does what again he's not the yeah kyle he's like an alchemist but also he dabbles in right okay and, and he has a daughter yes and like that that whole like yeah. little old family unit that they have really starts warming up like zorian starts sharing some of his knowledge he, at some points he's even like guys i'm in a time loop and he's like no one's gonna believe me and it's surprised that out of all the characters like the people in the house are the ones most receptive to the idea of zorian being a time loop so like very slow but satisfying realizations from zorian's end a point of view where like i can trust some people actually and another one that really got me is you know in the very first loop before he knew it was a loop Alquia, he was she was his date to the dance his first date of a few to the dance yeah but um he was fucking annoyed as shit with her the whole night and you know maybe she was being a little i don't know you know her <laughs> yeah but he's also you know him you know at, at the end of the night whenever he mentions that you know he was only going because the teacher made him and she got so hurt he genuinely felt bad right there he was like oh my god, I never considered she actually wanted to be here with me and it wasn't just an assignment from and the teacher. And it's such a good... Yeah, he came... The, that's the thing. It's so obvious to us, but, like, Zorian makes it clear that he can't even conceive of people, like... He can't even conceive of that kind of thing happening or, like, people being kind to him without having an ulterior motive. Like, when he finally comes to the realizations that lead to empathy, it makes it clear that, like, oh, he didn't even... This didn't even cross his mind, even if it crossed yeah. your mind. Like he's still very, a very immature child who is kind of learning empathy and like in a, and he comes from a family that kind of facilitated him not really wanting to be around people. So I think his background made it so he starts at like a lower point that I feel like a lot of his classmates would be as far as empathy and kindness would go. Yeah, and um, yeah, I could sit here and pull these out all day, but I think the one that what really sticks out to me is the beginning of chapter 24 and this should have been the beginning of chapter 26 which is the final chapter of the arc and i'm also going to talk about the beginning of chapter 26 and why it is awful i hated it Ooh. <laughs> but the beginning of chapter 24 god i like i'm tempted to just read these whole two paragraphs but i won't i'm going to summarize them but it starts out with like zorian will be the first to admit he was not the easiest person to get along with he's unsociable he was irritable he assumed the worst of people and he had always known that even before he got stuck in the time loop and this is his words i said i wasn't gonna read it exactly do it bitch just keep going but he always felt that he was justified in his behavior if anyone indeed if anyone had been foolish enough to criticize him about it before the time loop he would have reacted with all the subtlety and grace of a rattlesnake now he still felt he may have had reasons to behave the way he did, and he wasn't going to win any friendliness contests anytime soon, but the time loop had changed him. He was calmer. He was a tad more considerate to people around him. He hadn't had an argument with his family in years. His financial independence was ensured once the time loop is over. Um, but then while he's having these thoughts, Kirio kicks him in the knee, something she has done before on the train, something he snapped at her multiple times for in the series, but he says he pointedly did not snap at her. Even then, after this, she asks him if he will teach her magic. And in his own head, he's like, it doesn't matter. She's not going to remember it. And he agrees anyway. Yeah, and like little moments like that go a long way. And later on when he's teaching her, he's like, oh my god, I've never seen her focus or be so enthused about anything <gasps> in my life. This reminds me of when he finds out that she's, like, a really good artist. Like, that was so wholesome. It's like He was genuinely proud of her. Yeah, and, like, oh, man. Like, Kirio was a... Like, I, I can't stress how much she added to the story by coming to say, oh, yeah, I thought it could be an annoying plot thread. But it, it really sped up some of the progression with Azorian. Like, that, that art scene's so cute. And, yeah, that's a fantastic... Um, thing to bring up where like he also starts teasing her in a lot like cuter ways throughout the 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 story there's one reset where he wakes up and just immediately hugs kirio i'm like yeah you're yeah, going I'm through a lot it, man. man and uh i think i think that's i think that's what the story is to me is the story of zorian opening up i think that's what it is and learning that hey you know what like these people who are background characters in your life that i don't know he just brushed off he's like those could be people you genuinely care about which 
if I have hopes, it's that we really doubled down on this because the story ends on a point. And here's the thing. I think the climax of Soul Kill felt kind of predictable because the way the story kind of bent over backwards to have it so like Zorian goes through Matriarch to get to Zack to get to the army. It's like, well, we're setting this up so if we remove the Matriarch, Zorian loses a shit ton of progress. I really felt like that would be the big climax of this this arc and it, and it was all the spiders pretty much or like a majority of them get killed um and it also brings back the stake of the stakes of like a full death into the story um which i will i will give the story credit to like even before introducing the soul skill soul kill spell they introduced the threat of mental harm that is that will come with them regardless yeah. of where he jumps to as like a Okay, the story still has stakes even before we introduce the full kill. <clears throat> but anyways, now that the Matriarch's gone, I feel like Zorian has to even more rely on people and take bigger risks um, as far as relying on people. So I hope that's kind of, like, where it comes to. And I hope, like... I want all these minor characters to have pretty good arcs to Zorian since the story is yeah. kind of a slow-moving story. I can at least hope that we really dive into uh, Zorian's relationship with like all these characters and him realizing things that he didn't because his relationship was so shallow with everyone beforehand. God. And like even man, even little stuff like um, the, well, I don't know if that's the best example, but for example, there was a time when he confided something in Benisek, like, he does at some point deliberately give him rumors to spread. Yes. <laughs> and it works. And it works. But there was also a time where um, he told Benisek something and then Ilsa asked him about it like the next period. And he's like, that fucking asshole, he told on me. <laughs> and then it, it turns out uh, she had found out by her own means. Yes. Uh, but... Yeah, like, oh, yeah. He, he always expects the worst from people. I think that's a pretty safe way to put it. Like, the cop that he meets, we barely met him, but like... Yeah. Like, there's a lot of information that could have been exchanged there, but Zorian always starts on a very careful note. Which, like, I was kind of annoyed when Zack gets introduced and Zorian hides it from Zack for so long. Because it, it felt non-beneficial, but as time went on, it's like, okay, the story is proving you to be correct, but, like, I, ju I just... I, I wish it proved him correct earlier, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, at the same time, it's like... Well, you're thinking how you would handle the time loop, and hey, you would have probably gotten fucked if you handled it your way, but also you would have had... I would have been more efficient relying on people, so I would have had more backup. But Zorian is, is a careful person, so it fits his character to not share it with Zack, so that annoyance kind of faded over time, I will I will admit. An annoyance that doesn't really fade is how often the story like can grind to a halt to do exposition. Which, uh, yeah. near the end, like, I think you... Is that what you hated about the beginning of Chapter 26? Because as I recall, it's really exposition-heavy. So, it is exposition-heavy, but the particular reason I hated it was not that. The mm. one that did kill me with the exposition, and I, I think that's what... That is just the... I think that is just the biggest weakness of the story is... I, I you know, after reading Stormlight for so long, he does an amazing job at weaving in world-building details into very just casual conversation yeah and i think that's what this story needs because i feel like he reaches points where a character will mention an element about the world and i feel like the author realizes oh my god i didn't actually talk about that yet and then he has to go on for 20 minutes explaining and, it and it's not always the most organic way to uh, that they that they talk about it it feels very like video game introducing concept to you a lot of the time and i'm not saying this always happens sometimes the world building is is quite good but then you get to like the aranea explaining the psychic rats and it just has to be like a 15 minute explanation of like their thing with the rats and it, it's like i don't know like i guess it makes sense that they're explaining it with zorian but it, it just it was quite the hefty explanation and uh, even in some of the time loops, it gets pretty crazy. Like, some of the planning, the explanations get pretty long and verbose. The one that was cracking me up that I told you about yeah. is... <sighs> they're, at, <laughs> they're at Zach's house party that he's throwing. And, I don't know, some motherfuckers are asking about the um, like the history of the, the Veda family. Like, what's Zach's deal? And Zorian is like, I tuned them out because I already knew the whole story. But then 
he says the whole thing in his head and it was like, <sighs> it's like I, 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 I can't believe the author isn't making a joke because there's no way you accidentally do that I, I get the I get the mindset here right we're gonna I'm gonna introduce this concept to you but I'm not gonna do the thing where it's like I'm gonna explain this to the character like he doesn't exist in the world like that takes you away from the story right yeah so he, he summarizes yeah. it through Zorian to us and it shows that Zorian does know the story so like <laughs> It, it is funny, that. but I can see, like, the efficiency in doing it that way. It's still not the most organic way to introduce it's these the, things. It's like the strategy of, um... It, it would be really bizarre to have Zorian stand there and listen to Zach say it for 20 minutes, so Zorian yeah, says it. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it is what it is, you know? The, the thing is, like... I read, I read reviews about this story, like, stuff on Spotify, on uh, Audible... And people are, like, so happy to support this masterpiece of a story. And it's, like, from what I've read, this is far from a masterpiece. I think I think it's pretty clunky. And I think the plot... It's interesting because, like, the plot progression is... Am I even saying this wrong? I'm going to say the plot is not interesting, but the use of the loop is really hooking. Like, it, it's, oh, it, yeah. it uses the, the loop super well. It, it does interesting things on loops. Like, I really like, like... Using the setting of a school and a magic system that is fairly decent, it allows you to, like, make the loops still feel like progression. It's like a roguelike where you make slow progression over time, where Zorian yeah. did the library arc. He knows how to look up books now. He doesn't have to go back to the library. So it cuts off this thing. It's like, how is Zorian going to have time to do all the things he needs to in a loop? No, because the story is really, like, the theme really enforces learning so once you've learned it, you don't have to redo that arc so he can do new things and make a lot of progress very quickly. Like, the mind package with the Araneo is a very convenient plot device to, like, oh, we're going to get pieces moving right off the gate as soon as I start every loop. And that's why she had to die. <laughs> and that is why she had to die. Um, the, I, the, way the, <laughs> the way the reader reads the matriarch's voice is so fucking funny to me. <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> why. <laughs> Now, talking about the matriarch dying, I want to talk about the final chapter in general. Yeah. Because that beautiful intro to chapter 24 that we got, like, genuinely excited about and just gushed about Zorian and the story for a little bit, I feel like that would have been a very lovely beginning to the final chapter of the arc. Mm -hmm. um, instead, the final chapter starts with Zorian, he, like learning about all the different primordials and like yeah oh my god I he, he, has a, he has a big thing where he even goes through them and lists what they look like and their abilities and you know you combine the fact that at this point in the story it's been established more than one time that like oh we believe the invaders might be trying to summon a primordial and then you start the final chapter of the arc with giving us the roster of primordials so obviously I'm like, holy shit, the end of this chapter is going to be a fucking fireworks show. But the the primordials are never mentioned again after the start that's that. the, Unless the primordials are extremely relevant within the next six chapters, you could have spread that information out, my guy, uh, somehow. Uh, yeah. But I guess, like, it could have been something as simple as, like, Zorian spent another day at the church and he learned and studying more primordials. And he does yeah. that at the beginning of every loop and you kind of spread it out. All you needed to know is that primordials are big, scary demons, and we're going to summon one, and it's going to yeah. rampage. Like, they're not going to be able to contain it once it's summoned, and that's the threat. Which, um, okay. I must have missed something with the story. So what is the loop's connection with the primordial again? They want... It, it's like the, the guy in the red cloak, which, by the way, is a projection, so I'm still not discounting that it's a classmate from Zorian. Like, they, they make that a clear point. Like, the, the red cloak yeah. is just a projection, so it doesn't even have to look like the guy necessarily. Yeah, they went, through all this, they went through all this effort to fucking throw a magic lance through him, and he buffed into smoke, and Zorian's like, God damn it. Yeah, so, like, from my understanding, it's like, this guy started the loop through Zex so that the primordial plan can have infinite tries before it goes through. Is this correct? Is, is, is that what I was supposed to be getting there? Let's say that again. Uh, the loop is going over and over so that the bad guys can properly do the primordial summoning. Like, they get infinite tries Whoa. on the primordial summoning. Is that 
I, I got conf- Okay, okay. We don't know why the time loop's happening. Okay, I thought they were explaining in one chapter, and I was driving, so I was like, shit, I feel like um, it's not quite de- clicking. <laughs> that's definitely how they're trying to exploit the time loop, but uh, we still don't know who's, like, ultimately responsible. Okay, okay, Red started. Cloak is is taking advantage of it to have infinite tries, but it is because not necessarily the start of it. There still is the possibility that, as dumb as Zack is, he did get his memory wiped. So, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe that, he started... Man, Zack is... <sighs> Zack is such an interesting character, narratively speaking. And, Ooh. like... Be- because it's, like... None of the ma- the main character nor main villain are the source of this. It's just this kid who who got who has gotten good at combat, but he's really slow learning compared to Zorian and the other time traveler. So, it's, Dude. like... This genuinely made me laugh, where it, it, it's that, that one loop where Zack was really interested in Zorian, and uh, he was talking about, you know, kind of the stuff he's done, and he's like, yeah, you know, I tried going to the library, he says, fucking read, it, he's like, I, I, it didn't, I, don't, I didn't like it a whole lot, I didn't go to the library again, and Zorian was like, wait, that was a joke, right? <laughs> but then, you know what, it, it, it's, it, it, that is dumb, but Zorian's like, to his credit, most of these combat spells he learned are straight up illegal and probably wouldn't be in the library anyway. And he taught one of them to me. So, you know what? Yeah. Maybe he, he's clearly learning something valuable from somewhere. Indeed. Um. Oh, Willard! <laughs> I, I gotta tell this to you. You know how Wildbo has, uh, for her part, or for his part... <laughs> there was a for his part I, I caught in, in this at some point. Yeah, whenever that came up, I was like, oh, it's just like Wildbo. But uh. this guy... Has has a thing, and it's Zorian blinked. Oh my god! Oh, well, as no, soon as I said it, you're like, yeah. No, hold on, hold on. How does every loop starts? No, no, no. He that's not how every loop starts, right? It's oh, not Zorian uh, blinking. Good morning, brother. Yeah, no, no. Okay, yeah. right. I was like, oh, is it part of the first loop? Because then, of course, it's gonna be uh, commonly repeated. But no, you're right. If I can't pinpoint where it's used, but now that you mention it, it's like, oh my god, it really is everywhere. In, Zorian uh, think- blinked. <laughs> In the second to last chapter, because I was doing it yesterday, I think they did it like three times in one chapter, and it's usually when someone tells someone something shocking. Like, for example, when Zach tells Zorian he never went back to the library, it's like, Zorian blinked. So I thought that was funny. (laughs) What else to bring up? So, like, yeah, like, I don't know if this is Masterpiece tier yet, but, like... I, I do like the, the loop. I I do want to read the next part. I'm actually excited because it's coming out in May, so it's not that far away. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, I wouldn't call it a masterpiece by any means, but I really enjoy, I, I really enjoy it. And Do you think it picks up from here, from what you've read? Like, I mean, I, I still I, I, I still enjoy this. Well, man, it was so long ago. But I remember liking the stuff that came after this with about the same density as I enjoyed the stuff before it, but... Cause, cause with this story, I feel like it's, it's a lot of setup, and I keep waiting for the shoe to drop. And the shoe finally dropped on twenty six, but it was exactly how I expected it. So it's like, it's it's not quite hitting climaxes for me. It's always doing a rising action. It's always oh, like, it, it's a, it's so much edging. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And like, I feel like there could be an amazing finale to this. It, but like what if the finale is like another like oh well i expected all this because the story took such a slow path there where like logically this is how it's gonna end and it's like i don't mind stories that have like a logical ending without like a big twist but it also predicates that the adventure had a lot of highs and, and exciting moments along the way while mother of learning is like a pretty chilled laid back like there's not many fights like Zorian has like the only fights that happen are at the end of the loop where you know that they're gonna lose anyway so it's like I'm just waiting for this fight to end there's a the only sense of tension was like kind of the those moments where um Zach was dying super early in the loop and Zorian couldn't get anything done like he, there's well, not he's like can you fucking stop <laughs> there's not many wrenches thrown in zorian's way when i think about it and i might be missing some obvious stuff but i think we could have used more of that actually like yeah, even we... the Aranea situation they become pretty buddy buddy after not too long you know yeah. um now here's here's another thing i gotta talk about i i could not stop thinking about this because the fight with red robe um it, it actually reached there was a certain point in the fight where i was like 
I actually really like this particular part. And then there's the thing that came after it I didn't like. So, but he, had, I don't know. They have the initial fight with Red Robe at the Aranea complex. And then the loop restarts and Zorian's like, holy fuck, I got to go now. I can't even wait till the end of the day because this guy already knows about the Aranea. He's just going to go kill him. I got to mm-hmm. get there right now. And so he's rushing as fast as I can. And obviously me, the reader, I'm like, yeah, fucking go. I want to see what's going on. I want you to like, fucking go. But he gets to Sayoria and he doesn't go there. He goes to a shop and he's like, he, he buys the gun. And at, at first, I don't, going to the shop was a really big pace break for me. So I was like, if, if, if we're going to do this right now, this shop visit better be, it, it better pay off so fucking hard. It better be the coolest <laughs> fucking thing. I, I didn't like it a whole lot. So the gun thing, it's not so much the fact that he used a gun. Because ultimate, like, if the gun had won the fight, like, if the gun had stopped the other guy and he totally got away after that, I would have been fucking pissed. Yeah. Like, in a story that's all about building up your magical abilities, winning the fight with a gun would be a slap in the face. A little ultimately, bit. Ultimately, it just stuns the guy. So I'm like, okay. But the, the thing I didn't like is, to me, the fight could have already had a pretty satisfying conclusion because during the invasion and everything up to that point and when Zorian's being chased by the Red Road through the tunnels, the whole time he is completely outclassed. It is hopeless. Even Zack was like nothing to this guy. And we reach a point where Zorian is in disbelief because the guy's like, you know those spiders aren't the only ones who are masters of mind magic. And he starts trying to attack Zorian and Zorian's like, Oh my god, I'm so much better than him. Yeah, that was such a good pop off moment. They really, he really could have capitalized that on a little more. Like, like you're, that, I think you're bringing the up. moment of a fight where, you know, maybe Zorian doesn't have the skills to totally mind fuck someone like the matriarch did. But I feel like it would have been cool if like he could have hit him with some kind of mind blast, and then he escapes, and he's like, "I gotta start." The, the thing is, since that was brought up, Zorian always uses the same strategy of just overwhelm with the senses. It would have been cool where it's like, "Well, bitch, I've I've refined that attack, and I have like a proper mind attack instead of like the third time using the same kind of mental attack of just like overwhelming." So, um... You know, obviously, if Red Robe is as important as he clearly is, it would have been. I mean, maybe you can't kill him off right there, but I don't know. I feel like that was a that was very satisfying for me. To me, that was the fruits of Zorian's labor, and it was a really cool turnaround point in the fight where he's like, oh my god, this is an advantage I have because of his actions in the story. It's something that the protagonist has earned. But the thing is, that's not where the fight ends. The gunshot happens after that, and that is played like the way that is written it was played as a big mm. feel that he bought the gun and used it and it's that, I, a, it just was not as cool the thing know. man they're like the 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 build-up is is like very engrossing but the pop-offs they're just not quite there they're not at the level when a pop-off happens in worm worm can worm and pact can have like slow stretches but then they pop off into something where like yeah you know, it, it is kind of the opposite effect isn't it <laughs> yeah like I don't know, like, that is the thing that's keeping me from going, like, man, I love this story. I'm still invested, I'm still interested. It's just, like, I I kept waiting, and they, they might come later. Don't get me wrong, they might come later. I just don't know if this is the writer's strength, is, like, hitting those climaxes and hitting those notes. Like, think of, like, a Stormlight Archive climax. Those are, like, earth-shaking. Those are, like, Kaladin realizing he needs to save Elokar and and flying to the plains and becoming a Dragon Ball character. Like, they make you feel good. I think, uh, ultimately, this probably suffers from the same thing I say about every web serial, which is like, man, it just, it, it just needs a rewrite. Because, like, not only does... Because, you know, everyone's waiting for the fucking worm rewrite that Wildbo mentioned years ago that's probably not going to happen. I, I, I've i been part of this fan base long enough to know it, it is yeah. not real. <laughs> and, like, even other web serials, not even this one, there's another one I read where, the, like, it was the first thing he ever wrote, and I really enjoyed it, but he's like, I, he's like, I'm aware of the fact I need to rewrite this one day, but, you know, he's never gonna. And that's the, th- here's the thing, this Mother of Learning, I really like it, but it's not without its flaws. And I'm like, man, web serials are 
the stage performance of writing sometimes where it's like you i mean it if you're sticking with a schedule like wild bow where you're publishing a chapter every two to three days it's mm -hmm. like sometimes you're just gonna have to put out a chapter that isn't everything it could be um man i i really is i love these stories so much and i wish i had a version that was everything it could and be. i mean that, that's what draws me like i'm glad you got me into this web serial world because like weekly manga is the coolest thing that exists to me like the fact oh, that yeah. one creator is putting this work out and they're putting it like four to three chapters every like three to four three to four chapters every month is like nuts to me and so the web serials hit the same notes and like they don't have to do the drawing but they do have to write a lot of words and 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 have character beats ready so it's like man it, it is tough i don't hold it against them um all of these are too long by the way i think like manga can, can be a little better length than these web serials that i think they they like they just get into the habit of, of going very long but it does pay web, off web serial authors just fucking go man which yeah. do you have other web serials you you recommend to me because i've been like i had to do a drive from dallas to austin recently in which i got in a car accident which i didn't, oh. even, didn't even bring up in the podcast but that sucks um, you know, it's funny because I'm, like I'm running low on reading materials that I'm trying to get to. So like the book I'm reading right now, for example, that you know I've been talking about in our Discord chat, that is also a web serial, and it's probably the only one that is reasonably linked. Re web serials are just long. Yeah. But the one I'm reading right now, for example, um, I. I think now there's an official print version, but at the time there was not. So I printed my own version using the free ebook. Mm -hmm. uh, and the whole thing only came out to like 300 pages. And even then, the back, like 30 of those, is just like extra materials from his website. Very and I'm like, that's, I'm like, that's less than most Harry Potter books. I'm like, that's a pretty reasonably linked web serial. Bradley, let's, let's, let's make a uh, web serial. I'll make a fucking web serial. Dude, make a web serial. Brad, I mean, it, Bradley's got full, uh, got a ton of good, cool ideas. Oh my god, I have so many stories. And the thing, like, uh, that's what's cool about web serials is it takes the least amount of resources. That's the beauty. Story. If you have a good story, you can make a good web serial. You just have to have the work ethic. And man, like, because I, I like reading stories about Wildbow, for example, starting out, because, you know he had never written anything before he was just like i'm just gonna write and he didn't even like he didn't even like put out advertising either it was like all word of mouth um we live in a world where these things are taken more seriously we're post tumblr like yeah. fanfic era people are willing to just read shit uh, online now um so, so like it's so, easier now too i think mother learning is pretty good uh I actually really, I really enjoyed it. I went through it a lot faster this time than I did the first yeah, you, time. Yeah, you crushed it. I zoomed and uh, obviously it's not without its gripes, which we did not hesitate to speaking out on. But uh, I think there's something really cool here. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to keep going. I definitely think, well, actually I can't know that because, you know, I haven't finished the whole story. That's but... the thing. I I always got the vibe that to me, this being the end of arc one seems like it's probably the point where it's like, you might know if you like it by now, kind of like the Leviathan arc is in Worm. Mm -hmm. But I guess I ultimately don't know that because, for example, like for for you with Worm, like I don't think it ascended, like truly ascended for you until you got to near the end where it's like it really pays off. Yeah, like um, with with Worm for me, it was like it's kind of similar because the Le Leviathan arc is the big shoe drop. It, I mean, to be fair, it was a much better shoe drop, but also like it's a big kaiju fight and like a lot of people died. But it like the the thing with Worm is like <laughs> action set pieces won't always be the most interesting part to me, and that was like a very long action set piece, so I was still pretty mild about it. I look back on it pretty fondly though. Um, with this, it's like. The shoe drop moment also happened. I'm not, like, totally in love yet, but just like Worm, the stuff after kind of made that moment better for me. So yeah. maybe this could happen also with Mother of Learning. I, I already really loved Worm the first time I was going through, but goddamn, like, I loved it so much more afterward, mm -hmm. like, in retrospect. And, you know, 
I already like this story, and who knows, maybe it'll get even better. But uh, for me, that's Mother of Learning. And that is also Mother of Learning for me. Bradley, yes. what are your predictions for the things you've already read? We don't even need this section. That's the thing. <laughs> is, uh, dude, there was actually a shitload of stuff. I forgot, like, I forgot Tyven and most of Zorian's friends even existed, besides Kyle, if you count that as a Man, friend. here's the thing. I thought uh, Tyven was Red Hood, so you saying that is like, well, I don't know anymore, man. Tyven's actually... You know what? Here's another... No. Back when we were talking about ways Zorian has changed, um... Man, and, you know, I want to get your opinion if you think this counts, but I don't know. It, I thought it was kind of cool where Zorian, obviously he goes on his first expedition, expedition with Tyven and all of them, and um, in the next loop, obviously he knows, like, oh, they're they're going to go down there and get killed. Yeah, they know. Um, because that's what happens. And he's like, well, you know, I got shit going on this loop. He, he's like, man, I, I don't know. He's... He he's like it, it sucks, but you know they'll come back. But then there's a later moment where it's granted a very different scenario, but you know she's about to get killed by a war troll, and he's like, even though I am like very aware of the fact she is just gonna come back in the next loop, and her dying here would not matter. I'm not gonna let it happen. And, definitely. Uh, no, no, yeah, like there's definitely moments like that. Like there's certain loops where he's. He doesn't spend much time on it, but he optimizes he optimizes the way to keep her alive while she's still yeah, trying to go down there. Like he really works on it. Yeah. And uh, and why would he spend so much time? Like he's got more important things to do, but he does take the time to yeah, find it, the right ways to do it. So I think that says it, a lot. If he can figure out one sentence to tell her to save her life, he's like, Yeah, I'll spend fucking twelve restarts figuring it out. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a uh, you know, this could be a love it or hate it thing. I kind of enjoyed it because to me, it kind of felt like a, uh, not an interlude, but just kind of like a, uh, something between sub arcs where what the story kind of does is we'll have a significant loop that Zorian may spend three or four chapters in. And then that loop ends. And usually those loops are where he finds out something new, like the Arania exists mm -hmm. or, he goes to live and with then we that. have the fast forward loops yeah well like well, then we'll have some loops where you know he'll go through like a dozen loops in one chapter um and then i don't know i think that's kind of fun like we'll I, have, like, I, I think the story loops. apps 100 1000 needs that variability like when he when he starts working on how to save tyven you you get like a couple of paragraphs where it's just like try after try after try after try we don't even care about anything else that's happening in the loops and then we summarize like other stuff he was doing but like it's so important for the pacing to have those quick fires also in the middle i think the most abruptly restarts happen in the whole story and uh it was when he was practicing a particular magic it might have been practicing the shaping exercises or something else but mm -hmm. he mentions getting a book from the library and then he's like and then within the next few restarts i got it that, that's it that's I all like, folks well, i was like well goddamn well goddamn you don't have to the, the story does a good enough job of going through zorian's learning process where it's like you don't have to do it every time you can you can skip some yeah. that's fair um as for what i'm expecting i am expecting a twist with red hood but i guess if you can't remember tyvin exists it's probably not her so i don't i wouldn't know who it is now but i know it's not just it's it's not going to be the shape of the red hood that um that he saw um, I'm expecting Zorian to, like, find a substitute with the rats. Like, why else would they fucking be included in the story if not to substitute oh, yeah. for the spiders right now? Uh, I think it's not gonna be the friend... Like, he might enslave them, but I don't know if, like... I don't know if the story is gonna trend to Zorian doing dark stuff in the loop. Like, he's avoided it, and he made a point to be like, well, I, I'm not gonna be myself if I start doing bad things. I don't know if this becomes a darker story, and he starts doing more morally, morally ambiguous things to progress himself in the loops but that that is one way we could go where he enslaves a race of rats to uh to be able to send people information through the loops maybe we'll see i got i got a thing that i'll never forgive myself if i don't talk about it because i actually really like this moment mm. um and i thought i wouldn't but zorian taking down the lich was actually pretty cool for me and yeah. here's why the Lich is the goddamn Terminator. He is in like, even like the 
person who teaches combat magic is doing nothing to this guy. He has a he has a whip that in man as much as I complained about the fight against Red Robe, I thought the invasion in the final chapter was actually fantastic. It was the best best invasion by far. Yeah, he sets up this stuff where, for example, he shows a, is it? I think it's Chiron as the combat teacher. Yes. We see him, Zorian's like, oh my god, he has this magic whip, and it is just sliding through people. Even that vampire lady, he's like, it sliced her arm right off. Like, it's, it's cutting through it, them like butter. And then, to show the power scaling of the Lich, he slings it at the Lich, and the Lich, like, without grabbing, like, w like without looking, he just grabs it out of the air, and it doesn't harm him. And we see him get hit by all kinds of stuff, fire, and he's like, y'all are so puny and that's good because it's setting up this arrogance and this feeling of invulnerability that he has and we also know that yeah he's the kind of arrogant guy who will grab your attack out of midair yeah so that, we have, that is well established yeah and uh i don't know it's that just makes it all the more great whatever zorian it's like from the lich's perspective he was probably just fucking throwing a rock at him and he's like yeah i'll fucking catch it out of there this would look badass <laughs> and it takes him down that so. yeah and again it was teamwork because uh he took it out with his necromancer friend yeah. helping and him he, in that way even so. zorian was like like he could have easily you know batted it aside with a shield or something but i think that's why it was important that we showed him grabbing an attack earlier in the yeah. fight and also it, it was not unheard yeah, Zorian even says, like, he probably didn't bat it aside because, I mean, he's so, he feels so invincible. I mean, next time this happens, I bet the Lich dodges because Red Robe is like, hey, stop stop that catching shit. That's not cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought the Lich was fucking cool. Yeah. So. He, he's, a, are cool. he's a bad guy. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a mean one, that Mr. Lich. Mr. Lich. All right. All right. That's Mother of Learning. Uh, come back around the end of May, early June, and we'll probably talk about Arc 2 around then. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. All right. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.